episode of Sports and Sounds podcast. We're on season four, episode number 44. Andy, how are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. It's, uh, it's September 18th. Uh, we're on episode 44. Tonight's the sports edition. And as always, we've got lots to cover. We've got some oh overlap. We've got some overlap. We've got some seasons coming to an end. We've got some seasons starting as such as uh, IE football, NFL, college, all these things happening, but uh, mainly baseball. So I'll start off with a trivia question, Andy, right. that's focused on baseball. Okay. If everyone remembers the Ken Burns documentary called Baseball, I think it was a nine-part series called mm -hmm. Nine Innings. Each yep. chapter was an inning, uh, nine parts. Um, what year did that come out? It debuted on this day, on this very day. Was it 1992, 1993, or 1994? It was on this day that that documentary. Okay, I think we'll get to the answer. We'll get to the answer at the end of the episode. But um, Ken Burns done some good work on documentaries, and then he tackled the baseball subject and um, went uh, did a deep dive, basically. So very. And good he's stuff. done a lot of topics, not just sports oriented. He's done a lot of stuff. Yeah, he does a lot. He's a very good docu documentary documentarian, and uh, you know, some some stuff I like of his, some I don't. Uh, you know, for, for instance, but yes. but this baseball one is great for this show because um, we could almost do a bonus episode just on you know some of the topics. But uh, let's He's talk like a little multiverse. Multi like you and I are with sports and songs. You know, he does yes, multifaceted. Let's start off a few a little Mets notes here. Um, over the weekend, a lot of players signed those one-day contracts to retire with their original team. You know, Emmett Smith went to the Cardinals for a few years and signed a one-day contract to retire with the Cardinal with the Cowboys. Players have done that in the past. And this weekend, Big Sexy retired a New York Met. Of course. They had a thing out there. Now, I got some notes on Big Sexy here. First of all, he is working on getting that name trademarked for himself. Colon? Yep, big sexy. I mean, he wants cologne. His name. cologne yes. uh, big sexy. He wants to trademark it. That's yep. a not a. That's a great idea. You know, I'm sure Gene Simmons would be all over that because he loves to do stuff like that. Well, there was a wrestler, Kevin Nash, who went by Big Sexy. So I don't know if there's be an issue here or not. But uh, just here's a list of teams Bart played for in his career. Okay, he, he started with Cleveland Indians. Uh, you young kids won't know this name, but the Montreal Expos, White Sox. Angels, where he ended up winning a Cy Young in 2005. Red Sox, White Sox, Yankees, A's, Mets, Braves, Twins, Rangers. Now, with the exception of one of the years at the A's, he always got to wear a number 40. Okay. So I thought that was kind of cool. To put it that many teams and get the same number all the way through, that's pretty good. Wow. Uh, Four-time All-Star, uh, 2005, Cy Young, 2005, led the AL in wins. In 2016, at the age of 42, became the oldest player ever to hit a home run. That's his only home run. Perfect. Most career wins by a Latin American-born player. So, big sex, he retires a Met. Now, they didn't retire his number. He just retired a Met. So, let's relax. Okay. I'm sure the number retirement will come later on. But uh, he, had a, he had a decent career. I mean, you look at some of his numbers. Arguably Hall of Fame, but we'll see. They kind of Hall of Fame looks away from someone like that when they have that many teams they've played on. But take it up with Gaylord Perry and Nolan Ryan too. They're in. Yes. So here we go with other stuff. The stat of the week. We're gonna start with that one. I like it. Here we go. Here's a list of two through ten most hits by a player in the eighties. Okay. Now, let's take a look at this list. It's kind of a trivia in a way, but the number two is Eddie Murray. And here's their at bats and their hits and their RBIs. So Eddie Murray, Willie Wilson, get Boggs. No, it wasn't Boggs. And this is American and National League now. You think you know who number one is? I think I have a clue. And it would be who? What's your guess? Mr. Gwynn. Tony Gwynn? No. He started later in the 80s. Oh. It is. And of course, I have a picture of the guy as a fielding position, but because I just, I loved his mustache. I loved his curly, messy hair. It was Man. Robin Young. 
Robin Yount. And here, here's ba also back in the day when players slid in hard to take out the shortstops. So you had to jump to save your life. But yeah, 1,731 hits for Mr. Yount. Well, that's a stat I don't think many would get right. Would they know right? that? Yeah. Ended his career in center field. Of course, you know, shortstop's a young man's game. So Robin Young, there you go. Here's your stat of the week. Pretty good company is all I can say. Yes. WNBA playoffs are in full swing. They're in their first round. The Aces did win their series 2-0 yesterday. Uh, the Dallas Wings and Anaheim or Atlanta Dream are tied at one. Liberty and Mystics, or I mean one nothing for Dallas, I'm sorry. The Liberty over the Mystics, one nothing. And the Lynx came back and tied the Sun. Now here's the deal, like we said before. It's best of three. First two games are at the better seeded teams arena. So that means they went one and one in Connecticut. The game decider is back here in Minnesota Wednesday night. Wow. So the Lynx, the sixth seed over the three, I, could, I call that upset. Five over yeah, four, yeah. I don't know that. Especially six over over Connecticut. Upset. Yeah. So this could be interesting. The girls are coming home. We've got a few days rest now since the other day. We have that home crowd going. Don't know the dates for the second for the next round yet, because again, those other games are in their second round or second games. Uh, they're tomorrow night, I believe, also. And depending who wins and loses there, we don't know when second round games are yet. But yeah, that's uh I was uh you know um, uh, on, on Facebook yesterday leaving updates on the Lynx game throughout the game. And, you know, they had a healthy yeah. lead throughout. Uh, I was posting yeah. updates on the thread. And, you know, at one point, I think it was 10, 12, 15-point lead. And Connecticut would keep putting a dent in it, but I don't know if they ever led in the nope. game. The Lynx um, really started out good. Now, this is one of those strange tournaments where you've got back-to-back -back home games at the better seed, and then mm -hmm. you have the all-deciding – third game on the road with the lower seed, if you will. Yeah. Wow. I know some people talked about they wanted to have the lower seed have the first game and then the higher seed get the next two. But I, th th if you're the better seed, you shouldn't need a third game, right? You should yeah, it it's, it's no matter how you do it, it's still fair. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, but, boy, that was uh, so nice to watch that. Me. The PWHL, Professional Women's Hockey League, had their draft today. Okay. Uh, Minnesota does have a team. Now, a lot of people are ripping on the sport because they announced the teams, but no one has a team name yet. They said the locations, which okay. life goes on. Get over it. There's our first pick. Minnesota takes Minnesota homegrown forward Taylor Hazy. It's the first pick. Now, you see there, yes, that's Billie Jean King. Yes, I was going to say she looked familiar. She is part owner of this league. I did not know that. Well, you're going to learn some more here in a little bit. Educational show. That's right. This league and its six teams are owned by Mark Walter, chair of the Los Angeles Dodgers and owner of the Mark Walter Group. Just like I'm owner of the Andy Group. Uh, tennis legend Billie Jean King sits on yes. the board. The Minnesota coach is Charlie Berghoff, head coach. Now, there were some rips on Charlie coming up here, and we'll kind of see if I remember writing them down here. Uh, he's equipped with 15 years of coaching experience, former fighting Sioux, and he's headed to Twin Cities as a brand-new position. Um, of course, he has this great commitment there. Natalie Darwitz is the general manager of our team, uh, women's pro hockey player. She played under Coach Berghoff when he was coaching in college and stuff. Um, he went to Rosso, uh, Sioux. Of all the coaches in the league, though, he's the only one without international coaching experience, which some are saying is a bad thing and some are saying whatever, you know. So we'll see how that goes. It's a good pick. A lot of the league is real happy with him, saying that it's a smart pick. Um, some are saying no international experience, therefore it's going to be hard to get players. But um, if you look at Gopher history and Minnesota history, we draft within our own state anyway, so who cares? Yeah, so, yeah, it's a hockey thing here in Minnesota. That's what we do. So baseball notes. If the playoffs were today, here's your brackets. Now, you see Houston at two and Texas at six. Seattle's just outside that line. So those are those positions are fluid right now. 
And the National League, that last spot, six, that's been flipping between Miami and the Cubs. So that's, again, kind of fluid. Um, I like this, though. Who would have thought two years ago you'd be seeing Baltimore as a one seed? No Yankees, no Red Sox. You know, it, it's kind of a beautiful thing. And you're going to have, once again, you're going to have – uh, uh, one or two or both of those top seeds knocked out in either the AL right. or the NL yep. is usually what happens. So, you know, Baltimore's not a shoe in to get that very far either, but boy, right. first time in so long that Baltimore, it seems like forever since they've been a top notch team. Yep. And, you know, I'll, I'll bet the farm and all the animals right here. The semifinals will not be the one seed against two seed in both sides. I'll guarantee you that right now. Yep. It's baseball, yep. that's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, so and there will be that. some shocking upsets. I mean, there could be a, yeah. a team knocking off the Braves right away for all I know. But I mean, you know, it could be the Marlins and Rangers in the World Series for all we know, the two six seeds. Yes. And anything goes when it gets to this point. It's just, it's unreal. Yeah. So it's going to be fun. NASCAR, after their race yesterday, there's Denny Hamlin. He won their uh, the third race in the first set of three. So four teams or four races were out. They were around to 12. And those bottom four are already on the bubble for elimination. What they do in NASCAR, when you get to the next round, they reset your numbers, your, your points. So everybody goes back to 3,000 points, and then I see Byron and, and Truex Jr. have 36 afterwards. It's not how many stages they won throughout the year and races your bonus points. I see. Um, so I thought they reset it after each uh, three rounds. So. Bubba, ba uh, Bubba Wallace, Ryan Blaney, Brad Kozlowski, and Russ Chastain are on the bubble to be eliminated, but we have three more races. So anything could happen. In fact, in the race the other day at Bristol, Joey Logano was on that bubble. He was getting close to making it, got wrecked. He was done. Therefore, you don't see his name up there. Anything could happen. Coach Prime. It's our Coach Prime segment. Yes. You can, you go to photoshirt.com and order your Coach Prime gear. I just got a couple quotes from Coach Prime here. Um, just the man is an interview machine right now. Oh, it just, yes. God bless him. And, you know, before I get to this, I'm just going to say it's about, about Coach. He's got a chip on his shoulder. Let's not kid ourselves. But at 3-0 right now, he's backing it up so he can talk smack. If he was talking this way in his own 3 he'd be like, he wouldn't be Coach Prime, he'd be Dion, and be Dion, be quiet. He's 3-0. His boy's the quarterback, his other boy's the cornerback, they're doing studly work. He can talk right now. Mm -hmm. You know? There was a quote by the head coach of Colorado said, or Colorado State said, when I talked to a man, I was raised to take my hat and sunglasses off. After he was told that, Dion Sunglass Company made $1.2 million. So, uh, thanks, he, uh, Coach. He bought them for each player on the team. Then he, bought, then he bought sunglasses for every player on his team, too. Plus, because everybody said, take off your sunglasses, Coach Prime. Well, his company sold $1.2 million worth of glasses after that. Yeah, you got to watch what you say because he's going to turn around and make it you know, he's going to spin it and now make yep. some money out of the sides. And I don't know if that that comment about, uh, you know, the Colorado uh, state coach, was that no. something to just uh, spur the team on? Was that something to get under Dion's skin? I, I, think, I think it was a little of both. I think it was a little of both. Okay. I think he, well, he's kind of an old school guy. Yep. You know, doesn't like this this young hipster. I don't know what's Dion. He's our age, you know? Yeah, I think so. He, he's not some 30 something who, Blew a knee out in college and went straight into coaching. First of all, Dan was doing TV work five, ten years ago. Then he wasn't on TV anymore. Now I know where he's coaching at Jackson State. It's like, okay, nice PR stunt. Get a name in there. He led him to two bowls and winning records. Now he's here at Colorado. And so the man knows his football. He knows his coaching. He knows how to up players and get them going. Yep. Yep. But he during his uh, interview circuit the other day, he was on 60 Minutes the other day. He was on the Fox pregame, and he was asked by Shannon Sharp, asked Dion, what's the hardest thing to do, play football, play baseball, or coaching? Dion Sanders, who played nine seasons in Major League Baseball while having a Hall of Fame NFL career, said hitting a baseball is the hardest thing to do. He goes, 
And because later on in the interview, he goes, when you can fail out of seven out, when you can fail seven out of ten times and make three, four hundred million dollars a year, or a career, I mean, yeah, he's right hitting a baseball, long stick, round ball. Try to hit a square. Go for football. Let's just get it out of the way. They lost. All right, there we said it. Um, you look it on there. Well, geez, they tied him in the third quarter, and the only out guy outscored seven nothing. You know, they only barely got outscored in each quarter, but that ends up to a you know eighteen point loss. Um, and the, in my opinion, from watching it, the game wasn't that close. It just seemed to go for. Um, I guess our main quarterback they said had problems with cramping and dehydration, and uh, Fleck was complaining about that. Hey, Fleck, that comes back to you, the coaching, and the training staff for that then. Yeah, you can't force the water down the player's throat, but so much be there throwing water down his throat every chance they get. Yeah. You got guys cramping and dehydrating. That's kind of on the staff. And typically, the Gophers aren't a team that plays non-conference road games down in the mm -hmm. south in this heat. Right. And so now, I think that was a shock to their system as well. But Right, which, again, comes back good. to the coaching and the trainers for not getting ready for it. You know, yeah. It's yeah, got that point. excuse they use in the pros always – Southern teams come up to play Green Bay in December. Oh, they're not used to the cold. They could have came up on Tuesday and got used to it. They'd have to come up on Saturday night, you know. Yeah, uh, and this in this game, I think they got you know beat offensively, defensively, special teams. They just just got yeah. beat. I don't know if I would call it a, a rout. I think they kind of kept it close. The score is kind of misleading, but. They did not look good. In fact, North Carolina, that passing game, you know, they don't have that any running hard. game, no rushing game. It's all passing. And that's going to be fun to watch those guys uh, down the road. Bison. Talk Bison football. They won. Started early. They held on to win, though. Um, they're looking good and strong this year. They're tough. Beaver football. The Beavs. They won. All they do is win. Win, win, now, win. Where are they ranked in this in the nation? I saw – I haven't seen the latest rankings yet today. I did not find them before the show. Single digits though, right? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And now Dan's favorite part of the show. I love it. I love it. I even fell for this when I first saw it. Shame on me for not knowing better. Not a fan of Fox Sports Football right now, Dan. Because here on their Facebook page, oh, here's all of our games on Saturday's slate. Do you see the problem there, Dan? Let's see. No. I'll blow it up for you there. The Bison did not play Boise State. It was oh North Dakota that played gosh. Boise State. The logo, error on the logo. It was... The Fighting Sioux played Boise State, not the Bison. Oh, my goodness. Come on now. <laughs> That's pretty good. Come on, man. Is that the way they say it? Come, you know, yeah, come on. Come on, man. Come on, man. Now, this is – and I don't care what the network – there was zero excuse for this. Zero. It, just I, – I, Pastor, listen, yeah, so I can't say how I really feel, but – this is not yeah, right. It got, it, the thing got blessed before it, it went on the press, and yep. uh, no one yep. checked it. You know, and I thought we had bad interns here. I know Kevin yeah, and Oswald were caught there. It's tough wherever you go, but it is uh, uncalled for. You can't you can't make a mistake like that. Yeah, I know Kevin and Oswald. In fact, Connie called me and pointed it out to me. She's the one who caught it. So she saw it probably right away. Yeah, because she's a big Boise State gal. That Smurf turf they play on out there. She likes nice. that. And that, sir, I'm just going to end it on a bad note today instead of a good note, but that's that's what I got. Um, if you saw on uh, my Instagram post coming up, I will – first of all, this is my last show for about a week and a half. I'll be out of town. Uh, when I get back, I will be starting uh, NSIC weekly show, Northern Sun Conference. Northern Sun. So we'll talk football. 
boys basketball, girls basketball, or men's and women's, I guess they're college, it's men's and women's basketball now for college. Um, we'll talk Bemidji State hockey, even though it's not NCIS, but schools in that area will cover all their sports. Uh, wrestling, basketball, this, that, the other thing. All things NSIC. Um, they'll be coming up starting in the fall. So I'm going to guess around second week of October. Always a good conference. Lots of tremendous athletes in that conference. Um, they don't get recognized as such, but uh, that's a tough, tough schools are in that. And the more I hear from around here, and I'm not just saying this because uh, former intern Abby went there, but you hear a lot of people saying, oh, my kids went to Bemidji State or they're going to Mary or all these other schools that are up around that area, you know. So since I'm hearing more, that name coming up more and more often, those schools more often, we give them a little love and give them their own shows starting this fall. Interesting, interesting. Now, uh, I've got a couple tidbits here of sports, Andy, I think you'll like. Yeah. Now, minor league baseball, AAA season, the, the St. Saint Paul Saints have been eliminated from the postseason. They've been doing good but not good enough. There's some good teams in there. Uh, there's only one series left. They did not do well against the Iowa Cubs on the road this last week, and that led to their uh, demise. Now they come home, they play a, a six-game series at CHS, finish the year, no playoffs, no postseason. It should be fun if you get tickets to go down there. They might try some new uh, new players, players at different positions and whatnot, have a little fun with the remaining uh games i don't know if they called anyone up recently from double a but it's always good to take in a saints game but they had a good good year they're they're at over 80 wins you know for the season but there are some really good ball clubs in there as well so they will be wrapping up their season they'll be done the twins are in c yeah cincinnati take on the reds uh they've got i think two home series maybe three roads two or two road series and two home series left other than the Reds, who they're playing right now, that's a playoff contender. The rest of their teams are at the kind of at the bottom. They got the Rockies, but Oakland A's. Don't relax there because the Houston Astros in their last two series lost their last two series to the A's and Royals, who both have 100 losses already this year. Wow. And so and don't so, relax on the schedule. And so those teams are. It's very fun to play the spoiler when you're in that. You want to beat a playoff team. You want to play for pride. Uh, you know, you got nothing else to play for. You look forward. You want to beat them. You want to win the series. So just because we're playing the Rockies in, in Colorado, we're playing uh, Oakland A's, they're all going to be tough games, but they're they're winnable games at least. So that'll be seeing uh, how that'll shake out. I think the magic number is five or six or something. For five, the think, yeah. We'll be talking next week more of – what do you do with your pitching rotation going to the playoffs? Do you get the guys set up to have it end where you want it? Do you want to have guys go a certain way? Uh, I talked about this this weekend with some friends. It's a three-game series that first weekend. The next, if they win, it's a five-game series. And if you win, it's a seven. And then the World Series is a seven. And so teams are jockeying around their starters to see who are we going to face? And who do we want to oppose? And do you want to throw your uh, number one, two, and three guys for the for the wild card, and then start the divisional with your four and five. Um, yeah, do, do you get cocky and not start your ace in that first there's, series? Yeah. There's lots of thinking that goes on, and I and I didn't you know know all about that, I guess. But uh, who do you want to have? How do, how do the matchups will work? Now, back to the WNBA where they've got the best of three, where the uh, Lynx had the on the road two games, and then you come home for the third, which is strange. The wild card this season is another strange one. It's uh, three games, best of three, all at home of the better team. All all three. So there's no Mm -hmm. travel at all. They go back to back to back three nights in a row. The team who wins, uh, you know, two moves on. So there's a lot of assumptions that have to be made too. Do you want to have your pitchers go, uh, you know, assuming you win in two? So the next guy's ready. Well, you really playoffs, you can't assume anything. And some teams get burnt by assuming things. So, That'll be something fun to watch. Uh, go for football. We touched on that was the game, Andy. That that everyone said preseason at our round table. They said Gophers can have a good season, a really good season. They're probably going to lose that North Carolina game, but they still can have a very good season. So they won the first two. They lost North Carolina. Uh, no one's losing sleep over it. But once again, if you want to have that team in that top tier, that top tier that can compete with the top teams the new year's six a lot of gopher fans out there are saying this is the year we're going to be able to compete 
North Carolina was you know, only ranked 20th. So this is not a, a five or six team that, that beat them up bad. Uh, they are ranked 20th. So though you still have to win those games. I think the Gophers are at a good tier tier two, a higher level maybe, but I still don't think they're at that notch to go, uh, you know, 12 and two or, or 11 and three or something. Now they got Michigan coming in in a couple of weeks. So it'll be fun to watch. They should have a good season, but end of the year, you got Iowa, you got Wisconsin, you got Ohio state. There's, there's so many things. And until this team starts clicking, which they really, we haven't seen happen yet after three games, they're two and one, but they haven't really clicked yet. Yeah, this is a big year for coach Fleck too. Time with the new, with the new quarterback and whatnot. And, and like I, like I think next year, it could be interesting or the year after, uh, this could be some complications. Now, also in sports, local sports, 50-plus baseball, Andy, have announced yeah. the brackets for the state tourney. Uh-oh. Regular season, uh, Minnesota has the largest state of all states playing over 50 baseball in the, in the union. In the U.S., Minnesota has the largest. There's uh, 30, 40, uh, 40 to 50 teams playing. State tournament starts this weekend with 32 teams in eight different classes. So, at the end of this coming weekend, it's just a one weekend tournament. It's a two games. You're in a bracket of four teams. 32 teams are in it. There's six different locations, eight different locations, I believe. Um, and there'll be eight champions crowned. And then the season comes to an end, but it's a, it's a pretty big deal. A lot of people are watching. A lot of people are going, a lot of people are playing. It's a big uh, thing for bragging rights and whatnot. So Saturday, half the games will take place on Saturday, Sunday, the other half. And it's nice and quick tournament, Andy. It's not a two or three week thing. Yeah. It's not a double, uh, you know, no, back no drafting guys from other teams. Yeah. It's no drafting. It's, it's uh, the guys that got you there and that's it. So it's a double header for all the uh, teams that play, they play a double header um, on Saturday. And if you don't play Saturday, you play Sunday. So it's one, one day, two games, and then it's done. The sixties. Yes. I did not stutter the sixties. Wow. State tournament will be played the second weekend, the next weekend. It's a much smaller group. They played it as like a beta test, I believe, last year or the year before, yeah. kind of informal. They will have an official one. And I do think that's the first one in the U.S. as far as a state 60-plus yeah. baseball tournament. Baseball, once again, this is not softball. Uh, and so a lot of people you know, question and ask that as well. But uh, that's coming up this weekend. And then the Vikings, who do they play next? Now they play – is, that, it, is it well, Carolina? Well, they haven't. Well, the Vikings haven't played yet, but no. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. But they're, uh, it's either the next game. It's either the first game or the next game here coming up on a Sunday. It's on the road at Carolina. I'll uh, be looking for Adam Thielen and the Panthers. The Vikings will go yeah. play Adam Thielen, who is a, uh, a slot receiver there for the Panthers. But the Vikes 0 uh, 2, two tough games, but. Uh, it is what it is. Long season once again. They got the Chargers this Sunday at home, and then next week, October first, at the Panthers. Chargers. Uh, that should be two good games there. But the Panthers, I think that should be fun with Carolina on the road for the guys to see Adam Thielen, longtime Minnesota Viking, uh, Mankato State guy. So that's all I've got for sports. When the, when the Chargers are here next week, backup quarterback NDSU Bison alum Easton Stick will be there. Easton Stick. Yes. Horns up. Now, Andy, we got a trivia question. We don't want to forget trivia, okay. We don't want to forget it. Which we've done in the past. We have. And in fact, uh, listeners out there right now that wrote this answer down, it's a multiple choice answer question today. Ken Burns' famous documentary called Baseball came out on this day in which year? Ken Burns, nine part series, nine innings. Was it 92, was it 93, or 94? Was it 93? The answer is not that. Uh, I was thinking that, that folks may think it because it's the anniversary or something of it, but it was 94. 1994, Ken Burns came out with that. And if you haven't seen it, get a chance. It's a long episode, long series to watch. You could binge it, but it goes from the beginning of time, baseball, 1800s, mid-1800s, late 1800s, all the way through the early 1920s, 30s, 40s, uh, black baseball, Negro baseball, the American League, the National League, the, uh, the 70s, 80s, and then today. It talks all about these things. And today, once again, is actually 1993 or 1994 when he, when he completed it. But it doesn't have the current stuff. But 
Really good stuff. I think you'd like Andy right there in the eighties, a lot of eighties, good stuff. Uh, you yeah. like that, of course. Uh, and the significance of the Negro leagues and things like that. So that's a good thing, but that's all I've got for sports today. I'm going to, uh, uh, jump off here and uh, and take a cough drop. I got a sore throat, but have fun on your trip, Andy. Yes. Um, one of my stops is a tour of Fenway Park. So there'll be pictures and stories coming up after that. And that'll be, you know, that's, that's once again, that's what, late September? Uh, you'll get a different feel at Fenway or the pictures maybe than when, when yeah. people go in April or May. It's that fall feel. The colors will be turning outside the stadium and whatnot. Uh, but have fun on your trip. A lot of good things there in Boston. Uh, yeah. You might become a Red Sox fan. No. 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 And uh, by the way, no uh, relation here to the Dodgers cap. I, I just I just threw it on before the show here. Oh, I'm not, I'm not promoting anything. One last thing that I didn't mention on my central talk up. Uh, the Twins aren't going to reach 92 wins now, are they, Dan? They can't. They've been. I've been eliminated. So there will be an awards presentation coming up in mid-October. The yep. case of hams will be awarded to me. 30-pack of hams. Uh, our preseason Minnesota Twins bet was close. I think it'll end up being close. Problem is, mm -hmm. close doesn't count here when it comes to 30-pack mm -hmm. of hams. No. It's got to be on. We're all or nothing. We're going to be uh, making a purchase, uh, bringing some coupons and trying to get a good deal at the local yes. liquor store to give it to Andy. There will be an awards presentation uh, for that, and think we'll have, uh, will cover it? sponsored by Hams. I think Kip will cover it. Kip will probably cover it. Kip Cover yeah, and the Herald will to. probably cover this. But this is good. This is a uh, this is one of those good, meaningful bets that uh, both teams said no way is the other person going to win, and it was pretty even. And uh, uh, the the true I mean, the true champion won. I wasn't saying the Twins were going to have a bad year. I just didn't think they'd hit 92 wins. That's yeah, and once again, up. I wasn't uh, tank. And once again, 92 is tough to reach. Now, Atlanta Braves have it already, and I think so do the Dodgers. But a lot of Twins fans were thinking they're going to be 80 to 85, maybe 87, 88. And so a bet in that range I don't think would have been – uh, and we took 92 because that was the over-under on one of the betting boards. Something was that. I came up with that because I thought that yeah. they would hit the 92. So I felt yeah. strongly you laughed and kind of rolled your, rolled your eyes a little bit and and, uh, and turned away. But you said, I'm on. Now, here we are months later, Andy, and you're going to be enjoying yourself when you come back from your trip, some ice-cold hams in the old blue cans. Yes. Life is good. All right. Well, uh, Enjoy your trip and um, have a good week. I will see you guys later. Bye.